In so many unfortunate instances, the NFL officials have saved their worst performances for the very last. We knew it was going to be tough going against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I didn't know we were going to have to play the guys in the striped shirts as well. With Super Bowl season now upon us, how about we take a trip down memory lane and look at five times where the refs cost a team a Super Bowl and five instances where they gift-wrapped a Lombardi trophy to a team. Cost a team, Seattle Seahawks in Super Bowl 40. The referees 100% cost the Seahawks in Super Bowl 40. For starters, how about Daryl Jackson's game-opening touchdown score coming off the board for Phantom Offensive PI? That ultimately forced Seattle to take a field goal. You know, when you think of push-offs, that's not the kind you think about, really. Or uh, how about Ben Roethlisberger's go-ahead rushing touchdown that was upheld after review? But when you watch that replay, there is no clear evidence that he broke the plane for six. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. <laughs> And then how about Matt Hasselbeck being flagged for a block below the waist on a tackle attempt after throwing an interception? Even Al Michaels couldn't hide his disgust with the pathetic penalty call. We think it's a bad call. If you cut a blocker, that's a penalty. But that time, he made the tackle low, and that's legal. Jerome Bettis got to go out on top as a champion in his hometown of Detroit. The side is Super Bowl 40, no less. And the team won New England Patriots in Super Bowl 53. Super Bowl 53 felt like that one game that nobody really cared for nor wanted unless you were a fan of the New England Patriots or the Los Angeles Rams. Why? Well, because both teams won their respective conference championship games on very questionable officiating. The Rams over the New Orleans Saints and the Pats over the Chiefs. But boy was the officiating ever one-sided for this contest in favor of the Patriots. Who knows, maybe a bit of comeuppance for the Rams getting to the Super Bowl in the first place because of the refs? Eh? Maybe? Who knows? By the way, this game sucked. The yawn fest of the game was tied 3-3 three three in the fourth quarter when Todd Gurley broke off a big run for the Rams in New England territory. However, the officiating called the biggest phantom offensive holding call ever on John Sullivan, which brought the play back. Center John Sullivan, he's in the middle. Not a call I would make in that specific case. You can find that a lot in the trenches. And finally, you had Stefan Gilmore getting away with blatant pass interference on Brandon Cooks. That should have given the Rams a first and goal at the one-yard line. Cooks has a chance. Let's see. Gilmore's got a little bit of his arm right there, so he can't bring the left up. The refs missed the call, and Gilmore iced the game on the next play with an interception. The rules committee later stated that it should have been a penalty on Gilmore that would have given the Rams a first and goal at the one. But alas, the refs just handed Tom Brady and his Patriots a sixth ring instead. Cost of team, Philadelphia Eagles in Super Bowl 57. Super Bowl 57 between the Eagles and Kansas City Chiefs more than lived up to the hype. The league's two best regular season teams, led by MVP winner Patrick Mahomes and MVP runner-up Jalen Hurts, traded blow for blow in an Oscar-worthy thriller. One reason the game was so epic? Well, the officiating was consistent and just fine for the most part. Referee Carl Sheffers and his crew were following the good old let him play playbook in a big game. That is, until flipping the script at the worst possible time. The game is tied 35 apiece with less than two minutes to go. The Chiefs are facing a third and eight in Eagles territory, and a first down would have allowed KC to melt the clock and kick the field goal. Mahomes missed Juju Smith-Schuster on an end zone bound pass that stopped the clock. But the officials flagged Eagles corner James Bradbury for defensive holding on Smith-Schuster and essentially ended the game right then and there. How can you call something that borderline at this point in the game? Handed a team one, Los Angeles Rams in Super Bowl 56. Perhaps the refs owed the Rams this one after costing them dearly in Super Bowl 53 three years earlier. The refs were letting them play all game long, to the point where T. Higgins got away with a face mask on Jalen Ramsey for a touchdown. At least, the refs let them play until the game's most pivotal moment. The Rams were trailing by four with less than two minutes left, needing a touchdown to keep their championship dreams alive. For starters, the Rams got away with a blatant false start penalty that should have moved them back to the 13. And on that very same play, the refs flagged Logan Wilson for defensive holding on Cooper Cup to give LA a fresh set of downs. You tell me. That's what they called. Yes, it is. This would set up Cup's go-ahead touchdown reception, and the defense would hold on to clinch the Rams' second Super Bowl in franchise history. Even former NFL VP of officiating Mike Pereira blasted the call and said it was not defensive holding on Wilson. Wilson gets called for a defensive holding call on a third and goal play, and it's just not holding. Costa team, Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 1999 NFC Championship game. 
The Buccaneers visited Kurt Warner and the high-powered St. Louis Rams in the 1999 NFC Championship game. Facing a second and 23 situation in Rams territory with less than a minute to go, King found Burt Emanuel for a pivotal 17-yard completion. Burt Emanuel's catch. Yeah, that's good. I that's mean, a catch. There's nothing wrong there. Nope. But in an all-time stunner, the officials overturned the ruling and called it an incomplete pass since the nose of the ball touched the ground. The Rams would force a turnover on downs to clinch the NFC title banner. Then they went on to beat the Tennessee Titans to claim the franchise's first Super Bowl championship. Tampa was robbed of what should have been a conference title and even potentially a Super Bowl. And their team won Kansas City Chiefs in Super Bowl 54. It's one thing when there are bad calls that favor both sides. It's another when every single garbage call benefits one team and screws the other. But such was the case for Super Bowl 54, which would be better remembered as an all-time classic if the refs didn't choose to take over the game. First garbage call? This tacky offensive P.I. call on 49ers tight end George Kittle that took away a potential go-ahead field goal before the end of the half. Oh, but it only got worse in the fourth quarter. Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers faced a pivotal third and five play. Jimmy G threw an incomplete pass that forced a punt, but never mind the refs for missing a clear helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on Garoppolo that should have given San Fran a fresh set of downs. Yet, it just kept kept getting worse and worse. Then you had Damian Williams clearly stepping out of bounds on his game-winning touchdown reception from Patrick Mahomes. Cost a team, Oakland Raiders in 2001 AFC Divisional Round. Raiders and Patriots fans just know this story all too well. The Raiders were leading Tom Brady in the Pats 13-10 in the snow-filled affair at Foxborough Stadium with less than two minutes to go. On first and 10 from the Raiders 42, Brady took the snap but was clobbered by Charles Woodson, who forced the fumble that was picked up by Greg Beekert. The NFL curiously reviewed the play for several minutes, only to announce that it was an incomplete pass instead of a fumble. We're reviewing the play. The quarterback's arm was going forward. It is an incomplete pass. <laughs> New England season stayed alive, and Adam Vinatieri made a clutch 45-yard field goal in the blizzard to force overtime. The Patriots won the overtime coin toss, and the legend of Brady continued. He set up Vinatieri for another game-winning field goal in overtime, and the rest, as they say, is history. The Raiders, who could have easily won the Super Bowl that year, wound up losing John Gruden to Tampa Bay in the offseason. And Gruden's Bucks destroyed the Raiders in Super Bowl 37 one year later. Do you not believe the tuck rule was appropriately applied as it was written? I do not. He had it, both hands on the ball. It's in his body. He ain't bringing it back into his body. It's a fumble. And in Team 1, Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Super Bowl 55. Super Bowl 55 between Patrick Mahomes' Chiefs and Tom Brady's Buccaneers was supposed to be an all-time legendary Super Bowl. But in typical NFL fashion, the referees just had to take over the show early and often. With less than 20 seconds to go in the half, Brady threw an uncatchable deep ball to Mike Evans. But Bashad Breeland was flagged for defensive P.I. anyway, and, well, we'll let you be the judge. And then Brady threw another totally uncatchable ball to Mike Evans that set up a first and goal at the 9. Antonio Brown caught a one-year pass for a touchdown. Brady and Matthew then engaged in some heated trash talk, yet only Matthew was hit with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Ah, uh, she... <laughs> yeah, go ahead, refs. Just throw a flag anytime a Chiefs player moves a muscle so that way the Bucks can run up the score. Cost a team, New Orleans Saints in 2018 NFC Championship game. Not much more explaining is really necessary here. They blew the call. That call puts in first and ten. We're on an E3 plays and it's a game-changing call. Everyone knows that it's the worst officiating mistake in NFL history by a country margin. If the refs don't ignore the most obvious pass interference call of all time, well, the Saints melt the clock and kick the game-winning field goal against the Rams to earn a Super Bowl 53 berth. And if the Saints win the game? Well, I'm pretty sure that they would have throttled the Patriots in the big game. Tom Brady is great and all, but the Saints were head and shoulders above everybody else that year. The New Orleans would have put up more than a easily three points in the big game. Just saying, Saints fans deserve so much better. And honestly, we still feel for them all these years later. And in the Team 1, Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 43. Oh man, where do we even start? We could reference James Harrison's game-changing 100-yard pick six to close out the first half. You know, the play where refs didn't bother to throw a flag on the many obvious holding or blocks in the back penalties, or the refs missing a 15-yard penalty on Holmes for using the ball as a prop with his TD celebration. And finally, the game-sealing strip sack off of Kurt Warner. Anyone got a clue as to why the officials didn't bother to review it? Something is still fishy about that. But 
which other instances do the NFL refs cost a team a Super Bowl? In which other instances did they hand a team one? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. But hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.